Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School Class 05 TAC 22. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the viewing area at any time during the ceremony except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today is as follows. At 1000, Captain Hazenberg, United States Navy, commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Seif, United States Navy, guest of honor for today, will arrive. Guests will be asked to rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. The commanding officer and the guest of honor will address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the commanding officer and the guest of honor. Guests will be asked to rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. <laughs> Officer Training Command, Newport, arriving. U.S. Naval Forces Undersea Warfighting Development Center, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Butts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you have fashioned and created us as a people and called us as a nation to a place of trust and leadership in the world. We honor this day our newest naval officers, and we ask for your special blessing upon them as they embark on their journey into the fleet. Father, today our hearts rejoice in the day these graduates have dreamed of has finally arrived. So many are proud of their achievements. However, we are mindful that our achievements are possible only through the life you have given us, through the parents who have loved and nourished us, through the host of peers and friends along life's way who encouraged us, and those here at Naval or Officer Training Command who guided and molded each life, developing them into our nation's newest naval leaders. No one person is an island and none are perfect, and each is a witness to your watchful care and forgiving grace. With every accomplishment and privilege came added responsibility, and each one of these officers stands here today accepting of the duty that our nation has entrusted to them. Bless all who stood by these we honor and give them an extra portion of your love. Watch over and protect 
those who head off to, the, to their new commands. And today they stand on the shoulders of the greatest naval leaders of history who've inspired generations to fight for the freedoms that make our country great. Give them the strength and courage to carry on that legacy. Be with us today and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Mike Mark, Mark Harzenberg, Officer Training Command, Newport. Distinguished visitors, OTCN staff, family members and friends who are joining us both in person and virtually, and most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers of Class 05 TAC 22. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I am excited to welcome 98 newest graduates into one of the most prestigious, challenging, and rewarding careers in our nation, that of a naval officer. It's worthy to note for this class is the first one that not only includes soon to be commissioned ensigns, but also soon to be commissioned warrant officers, the aerial vehicle operators. This is the first class, so congratulations. To family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you have done preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Thank you for the support you have given them. It has enabled them to make the sound choices they have made, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. We are grateful to you for your continued support. To the graduates here, as commanding officer of Officer Training Command Newport, I am proud of all of you. You all had many other options in volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I can assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You overcame obstacles. Nothing was handed to you these past 13 weeks except opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. And you seized that opportunity. You embraced it, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for that significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity, to lead sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world and around the clock. Know that you are going to do significant and meaningful work for our country. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you. The highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, commitment. I urge you to continue to uphold the highest standards of excellence and integrity. Character matters. As writer George Eliot once said, character is destiny. Your choices in life will determine where you end up. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country your best efforts because nothing else will suffice. In closing, I applaud you for your accomplishments and perseverance. I, each of you are about to embark upon a great adventure, an adventure in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had or will ever have. And regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. 
Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is my honor and privilege this morning to introduce to you our guest speaker, Rear Admiral Richard Seif, Commander, Undersea Warfighting Development Center. A native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1992 with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Marine Engineering. He also holds a Master's in Business Administration from the College of William and Mary's Mason School of Business. He has served both at sea and ashore in various Navy and Joint Service tours, including commanding USS Buffalo and USS Jacksonville, and most recently serving as Commodore of Submarine Squadron 1 and Chief of Staff to Commander Submarine Forces, U.S. Pacific Fleet. His leadership is absolutely essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we are truly fortunate to have him here with us today to share some thoughts with the Navy's 98 newest Naval officers. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Richard C. All right, hey, bear with me while I get my glasses on here as I get older, got to put these on. But uh, I also, uh, I'm, I'm uh, triple vaccinated and I'm like 10 feet apart, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my mask off if that's, if that's okay with everybody, so thank you. Okay, Mark, so thanks, uh, thanks very much for that warm introduction and really, just really thanks to all of you for letting me join you here today. Um, you know, just start, start by saying good morning and welcome to all the distinguished guests, family, friends, and especially the class of uh, 05 TAC 2-2. Let me really just be the very first to congratulate all of you on this outstanding achievement. But uh, before I brag about all your accomplishments, uh, I did want to just take a moment right off the bat and really recognize all the family and friends. Uh, just what a great turnout tonight. I think there's almost 300 uh, uh, guests and family and friends here, just phenomenal. Uh, those who could make the trip in person, uh, but there's a lot of others so I think you couldn't be here. Also watching on a live stream to all of you. Uh, I'll tell you, there's one thing I know after being in the Navy for almost 30 years, it's that this job is not possible without all of your support. Uh, it's really a big decision to join the Navy, as you know, but it's also a big decision to let your sons and your daughters join the Navy. You know, we've signed up for a tough job, and I will tell you that we get our strength. We get our strength from our families. You are the secret sauce, the rock that keeps our families, or that keeps these men and women grounded you enable them to accomplish great things, whether they're putting in long hours here at OCS or when, when later on when they get out and they're deployed defending our nation. You ensure they can stay focused on the mission at hand. So on this very special day for them, I just want to start by saying thank to, thanks to all of you, the family and friends who support these graduates. Thank you. In fact, I think I may have, uh, is Brian Finman out there? Hey, there you are. Hey, great to see you, classmates. So Brian Finman and I are Naval Academy classmates. It was almost 30 years ago that he and I were in a ceremony just like this one, uh, taking our, our very first oath as ensigns and commissioned. And uh, by all accounts, Brian's definitely the smartest guy in the class of 92. It's great to see you. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm very confident that none of you are really going to remember me or what I said, but I will tell you, you're going to remember each other. And the bond you have as a class is something you'll carry with you your whole career is really on in life. You have an instant bond with everybody you've gone through this crucible with and just really tr cherish that. And you'll be amazed how that, how that kind of pays it forward as you go. So again, great to see you, Brian. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank the Navy Band. Uh, that's Navy Band Northeast for being here today. You guys sound phenomenal. Really, really great effort. Thank you. All right, so you know what a great morning. What a great honor to be here with you in Newport. Newport's the home of our Navy's flagship training and education institutions from the Naval War College. There was a time uh, during the Civil War uh, when the Naval Academy was relocated here to Newport as well, but Naval War College and then all the way down here to, to Officer Training Command. Uh, there was also a period where OCS uh, was re relocated down to Pensacola, Florida. And I will tell you, given the, tonight's weather forecast, I can see why that made sense. Um, but I'll also tell you, I, I, walking over here, I saw some cars idling in the parking lot. I know people are watching the weather, but I promise I'll get you out of here on time. Um, so I did want to just take a moment to start and recognize Mark and his team here at Officer Training Command. You know, Mark and the, all the team here, your command looks great, as it always does. Uh, you really have just such an incredibly important job to do 
And these graduates are a testament to the hard work and dedication of your staff, which I think we all know that job has been made 10 times harder with the global pandemic we've been fighting through, but you've ensured that we do not take a knee. We continue to graduate uh, top tier men and women uh, to lead sailors out in the fleet. And as I like to say, you know, COVID is tough, but the Navy is tougher, so well done. All right, so the mission of Officer Candidate School, if you'll bear with me, is to morally, mentally, and physically develop future leaders of character and competence, imbuing them with the highest ideals of honor, courage, and commitment in order to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. So that's a mouthful, but as I size up these uh, 98 graduates of the class of 05-TAC-2, Mark, I have to say to you and your team, mission accomplished, well done. All right, so finally for the staff, you know, I tell my staff all this time, all the time, but you really get, um, you get about five minutes to pat yourselves on the back and congratulate yourself for, for getting this class through, but uh, it's right back to work, as you know, to get the next class ready to lead out in the fleet. And hey, now moving on to you guys, the class of 0522, you're really the guest of honor here today. You know, just well done, absolutely superb effort getting through this really challenging course in spite of COVID, in spite of a lot of challenges, weather and everything that goes into that. Uh, I think you maybe, maybe some of you realize you didn't quite know what you signed up for, but I think you figured it out pretty quickly, and I guarantee you guys got each other through it, which really made all the difference, I'm sure. Uh, you know, in just a few minutes, you're going to take an oath, and you're going to take an oath to support and defend the Constitution, and you will officially be part of something bigger than yourselves. You're going to join a profession and an institution as officers in the United States Navy. And make no mistake, you're now part of the most respected profession and institution in America. In fact, I often have strangers come up to me, sometimes getting on an airplane, and you know, if you're on Southwest, they say, hey, military can board after the A group, you know. You kind of walk up and people say, hey, thank you for your service. And uh, to be honest, I always get kind of embarrassed. I don't know what, quite what to say, because frankly, I think we all serve as citizens of this great country, we all serve to some extent. We serve our communities, we serve the greater good, we're part of, part of, part of the greater community. And I, you know, I always say thank you for your support, that sort of thing. But just make no mistake that the institution, uh, the, the, of the US military as a profession, as an institution, is absolutely cherished and admired by every American, and don't ever lose sight of that. And those who've gone before you sitting right here in this gym, uh, OCS graduates like you, include senators, governors, astronauts, joint chiefs of staff, chiefs of naval operations, on and on. So as you look to your left and your right, keep that in mind. Those, those of you in this class, some of you may get out and do other things, but some of you will, may stay in. Uh, but the sky's the limit whether you go, go into politics or industry. Um, if you, um, if you uh, really just stick together and take those ideals that, that, that I think have come through uh, as you've gone through your training. And again, so as you reflect on your accomplishments, I really want you to be justifiably proud. Uh, but I will challenge you too. I'll tell you the same dedication and drive you've shown here at OCS, your tenacity to get through this program is what will be needed as you move on to flight school, surface warfare officer school, supply school, and even this new aerial vehicle operator school that I've heard about. Uh, wherever you're going next, whatever pipeline, um, we need you out there in the fleet standing the watch and leading sailors. And remember how I said to the staff, you know, they get about five minutes to pat themselves on the back. Same exact go thing goes for you. And it's one thing uh, you'll learn about the Navy. And I see some, got some uh, enlisted uh, warfare pins. I know there's some prior enlisted. I know they're going to agree with me. One thing you learn about the Navy, in the Navy, we don't spike the football and we don't rest on our laurels. There's always a new challenge. There's always a new mission. And please keep that in mind, and I, I know you'll meet it. Uh, so you're going to get a few days to enjoy this accomplishment, hopefully, uh, you know, get a little bit of time and, you know, get some, get some liberty. But your reward for this accomplishment is more challenges and more hard work, frankly. As you complete your training, your pipeline, you get out to where your country needs you, manning our nation's global response force out there in the fleet. And that's actually what I'd really like to just close with and talk to you about today is the unmatched combat readiness and the firepower of our Navy that you're joining. Uh, the good news is I don't plan to talk to you about drill or you know, naval engineering or damage control. I don't plan to make anybody do math in public, uh, with the maybe possible uh, possible exception of a Sean Lindley. Where's he? Sean, I think, has got the highest GPA in the class. I might make you do math in public. We'll see. Uh, but I don't want to. But I, what I do want to talk to you about is the why behind everything you accomplished so far, and will continue to accomplish 
as you complete your training and head out to your first sea tours. So first and foremost, America is a maritime nation. As George Washington famously said, without a decisive naval force, we can do nothing definitive, and with it, everything honorable and glorious. And it's no secret that our strategic competitors, they seek to break down the international rules-based order. They want to disrupt global economies. They want to intimidate their weaker neighbors. And they want to threaten freedom and liberty. These competitors do not share the same ideals that we do of free and open societies and the principles of human rights and democracy. You, class of 0522, are the shield that protects that ideal. Our fleet of warships, aircraft, submarines clearly is the most advanced in the world, led by our new Ford class aircraft, aircraft carrier. There's really no adversary that can match the speed, endurance, firepower of the United States Navy, hands down. Uh, make no mistake, we will be ready to fight, and we will not cede any battle space. We'll be forward deployed, standing the watch, providing a ready response force and a credible deterrent that continues to give any adversary pause and that has prevented a major conflict since World War II. And to quote another famous president, Teddy Roosevelt, you know, it's pretty easy to find quotes about the Navy from presidents, pretty neat. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt said, a good Navy is no provocation to war, rather it is the surest gantor of peace. It is clear that we have impressive warships, sensors, weapons, but really what makes them credible combat force are you, the sailors who operate them. You, along with the, fail the families, you are our secret sauce and our enduring advantage over any competitor. Because no, make, make no mistake, our adversaries, our, our would-be adversaries, are looking for signs of weakness, of reduced readiness, as we face challenges like the global pandemic. And in short, we must be most ready, most ready, when our nation is least ready. So what does that mean, be ready? It starts with a foundation you've learned right here at OCS leadership, professionalism, high standards. We must be professional warfighters, master operators of the most complex machines that have ever put to sea. We must be mindful of our heritage and the proud legacy of those who came before us. And we must be ready to operate our warships and our aircraft at their operational limits. We have to know how to stay in the fight, and we have to be able to fall back on our training and this foundation that you've learned right here at Officer Candidate School. So one more time, congratulations on achieving the title of Commissioned Officer, United States Navy. You're entering our fleet at an important time. You enable us to deter or meet aggression from any adversary. Remember, you still have a tough mission ahead, and I know you're gonna crush it. I look forward to seeing you in the fleet, and let me close by saying and be the first to say to you, thank you for your service. Thank you. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? Class 05 TAC 22, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. Having been appointed an officer in the United States Navy, do hereby accept such appointment and do solemnly swear that I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The 
The graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command Newport. Ensign Howe has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Howe is a graduate of University of Wyoming. Ensign Temple has been designated a Naval Supply Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Officer Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Temple is a graduate of Georgetown University. Ensign Romero has been designated a student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Romero is a graduate of Florida Institute of Technology. Ensign Bloomstein. Ensign Bloomstein has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bloomstein is a graduate of George Washington University. Ensign Tierney. Ensign Tierney has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Tierney is a graduate of University of Massachusetts. Lowell. Ensign Gallegos has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG 123 USS Leahy H. Sutcliffe Higby, San Diego, California. Ensign Gallegos is a graduate of Santa Clara University. Ensign OSHA has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign OSHA is a graduate of University of Connecticut. Ensign Jaime has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to DDG-121 USS Frank E. Peterson, Jr., Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Jaime is a graduate of University of Hawaii, Aminoa. Ensign Shamara has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Kearstarge in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Shamara is a graduate of Southern New Hampshire University. Ensign Adams has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to USS Germantown in San Diego, California. Ensign Adams is a graduate of Texas A&M. Ensign Aiken has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to LCS-26 USS Mobile in San Diego, California. Ensign Aiken is a graduate of Boyce College. Ensign Althaus Cressman has been designated a Student Navy Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Reinductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Althaus Cressman is a graduate of Utah Valley University. Ensign Althaus Cressman is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Ensign Atkins has been designated an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer and will be assigned to VFA-27 Iwakuni, Japan. Ensign a Atkins is a graduate of Ronan University. Ensign Abi has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Reinductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Abi is a graduate of Boise State University. Ensign Barber has been designated a Naval Supply Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Officer Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Barber is a graduate of Clarkston University. Ensign Bates Gray. Ensign Bates Gray has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to LCS-24 USS Oakland in San Diego. Ensign Bates Gray is a graduate of Indiana Wellesleyan University. Ensign Belmer. Ensign Belmer has been designated a Student Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Naval Reinductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Belmer is a graduate of Old Dominion University. Ensign Bidwell. Ensign Bidwell is a designated Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer and will be assigned to HSM 71 in San Diego, California. Ensign Bidwell is a graduate of Nazareth College of Rochester. Ensign Bow. Ensign Bow has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to CG 64 USS Gettysburg in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Bow is a graduate of College of William and Mary. Ensign Bowles. Ensign Bowles has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to DDG 78 USS Porta in Rota, Spain. Ensign Bowles is a graduate of Troy University. Warren Officer Brickley has been designated an aerial vehicle operator and will be assigned to Naval Reinductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Warren Officer Brickley is a graduate of Trident University International. Ensign Brooks. Ensign Brooks has been designated a Naval Intelligence Officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Brooks is a graduate of University of Chicago. Ensign Burns has been designated a Student Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Burns is a graduate of Villanova University. Ensign Burns is a recipient of the Commander Jack Levitt Leadership Award. Ensign Bynum. Ensign Bynum has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Reinductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bynum is a graduate of the University of Arkansas. Ensign Bird. 
and some burns have been designated a naval flight officer and will be assigned to Naval introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bird is a graduate of Florida State University. Ensign Clifton. Ensign Clifton is a designated an aerospace maintenance duty officer. He will be assigned to Fleet Air Reconnaissance Squadron 3 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Ensign Clifton is a graduate of East Carolina University. Ensign Connolly. Ensign Connolly is a designated student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Connolly is a graduate of San Jose State University. Ensign Coton. Ensign Coton has been designated a, a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Coton is a graduate of Texas A&M. Ensign Diuti. Ensign Diuti has been designated a service warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG 54 USS Curtis Wilbur in San Diego, California. Ensign Diuti is a graduate of Indiana University at Fort Wayne. Ensign Dito. Ensign Dito has been designated a Naval Intelligent Officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligent Officer Basic Course in Damnak, Virginia. Ensign Dito is a graduate of University of Notre Dame. Ensign Dito is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Desai. Ensign Desai has been designated a Civil Engineering Corps Officer and will be assigned to Civil Engineering Corps Officer School at Port Huaymi, California. Ensign Desai is a graduate of De Drexel University. Ensign Ezekiel has been designated a Student Naval Life Flight Officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Ezekiel is a graduate of Mississippi State University. Ensign Fenters has been designated a Naval Intelligent Officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligent Officer's Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. Ensign Fenters is a graduate of University of Oxford. Ensign Fidman has been designated a Naval Supply Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Officer Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Fidman is a graduate of University of Virginia. Ensign Flom. Ensign Flom has been designated a Naval Intelligent Officer and will be assigned to Naval Intelligent Officer Basic Course in Demneck, Virginia. Ensign Flom is a graduate of University of Utah. Ensign Flom is a distinguished naval graduate. Warrant Officer Foresight. Warrant Officer Foresight has been designated an air vehicle operator and will be assigned to Naval Air Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Warrant Officer Foresight is a graduate of Florida State College at Jacksonville. Warrant Officer Foresight has been awarded the Lieutenant Thomas Eddy Award for achieving the highest average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. Warrant Officer Foresight is awarded the, the, the Chappie United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award and is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Garcia has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Air Inductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Garcia is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Ensign Gavino has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Air Inductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Gavino is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Warrant Officer Goodyear has been designated an aerial vehicle operator and will be assigned to Naval Air Inductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Warrant Officer Goodyear is a graduate of American Military University. Ensign Hardy has been designated a service warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG-98 USS First Sherman in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Hardy is a graduate of Eastern Michigan University. Ensign Hardy is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Harrow has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Harrow is a graduate of San Diego State University. Ensign Hyder has been designated a service warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG or CG-57, Lake Champlain in San Diego. Ensign Hyder is a graduate of Southeastern Louisiana University. Ensign Henry has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Henry is a graduate of the State University of New York at Oswego. Ensign Herman has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Herman is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Ensign Hope has been designated a service warfare officer and will be assigned to LCS 24 USS Oakland in San Diego, California. Ensign Hope is a graduate of Excelsior College. Ensign Kellerman has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Air Inductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Kellerman is a graduate of University of Arkansas. Ensign Kelly has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to Naval Air Inductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Kelly is a graduate of University of New Hampshire. Ensign Crone has been designated a service warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG-62 USS Fitzgerald in, U in San Diego, California. Ensign Crone is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Warrant Officer Laser has been designated an aerial vehicle operator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Warrant Officer Laser is a graduate of University of Phoenix.
Ensign Lee has been designated a surface warfare engineering duty officer and will be assigned a CG-57 USS Lake Champlain in San Diego, California. Ensign Lee is a graduate of the University of California, Riverside. Ensign Lee has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lee is a graduate of the University of San Francisco. Ensign Lindley has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lindley is a graduate of the University of California, Santa Barbara. Ensign Lindley is the recipient of the Re-Admiral Stephen B. Lewis Ad Academics Award. Ensign Lobiondo has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lobiondo is a graduate of U Liberty University. Ensign Lobiondo is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Lopez has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned a DDG-114 Ralph Johnson in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Lopez is a graduate of National University. Ensign Lowry has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Lowry is a graduate of University of Texas. Ensign Martinez has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to DDG-123 USS Lane H. Sutcliffe Hugby, Higby in San Diego, California. Ensign Martinez is a graduate of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Warrant Officer Massong has been designated an aerial vehicle operator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Warrant Officer Massong is a graduate of American Military Universe, University. Warrant Officer Massong is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Magruder has been designated a Surface Warfare Oceanography Officer and will be assigned an LHD-1 WASP in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Magruder is a graduate of Middle Tennessee State University. Ensign Madenhall has been designated a Surface Warfare Oceanography Officer and will be assigned to LHD-2 Essex in San Diego, California. Ensign Madenhall is a graduate of Pennsylvania State University. Warrant Officer Metlin has been designated an Aerial Vehicle Operator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Warrant Officer Metlin is a graduate of Angelo State University. Ensign Meyer has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to DDG-56 USS John S. McCain in Everett, Washington. Ensign Meyer is a graduate of Amiji State University. Ensign Mitchell has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to DDG-123 USS Lane H. Suckling Pygmy in San Diego, California. Ensign Mitchell is a graduate of City University of Seattle. Warrant Officer Nolan has been designated an Aerial Vehicle Operator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Warrant Officer Nolan is a graduate of Daniel Webster College. Ensign O'Connor has been designated a Student Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign O'Connor is a graduate of Elizabeth City State University. Ensign Ulrich has been designated a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned a DDG-55 Stout in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Ulrich is a graduate of Old Dominion University. Ensign Olenek has been designated a Naval Supply Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Officer Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Olenek is a graduate of Western Illinois University. Ensign Patton has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Patton is a graduate of University of Central Arkansas. Ensign Penaranda has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Perananda is a graduate of University of Houston. Ensign Perkins has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned a DDG-74 USS McFall in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Perkins is a graduate of University of Maryland. Ensign Radimus has been designated a Student Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Radimus is a graduate of the College of New Jersey. Ensign Reefer has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Reefer is a graduate of Slippery Rock University of Pennsylvania. Ensign Rivera has been designated as Naval Supply Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Officer Corps School in, New in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Rivera is a graduate of Texas Christian University. Ensign Rodriguez has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned a DDG-66 USS Gonzalez in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Rodriguez is a graduate of University of Central Florida. Ensign Rodriguez has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Rodriguez is a graduate of Texas A&M University. Ensign Schlomer has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned to DDG-90 USS Chafee in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Schlomer is a graduate of Cleveland State University. Ensign Shiree has been designated a Surface Warfare Officer and will be assigned a CG-61 USS Monterey in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Shiree is a graduate of Duquesne University. Ensign Simmons has been designated a Student Naval Flight Officer and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Simmons is a graduate of University at Buffalo. Ensign Simmons is a distinguished Naval graduate.
And since SOBI has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since SOBI is a graduate of Texas A&M. And since Stanford has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Stanford is a graduate of Boise State University. And since Stevens has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Stevens is a graduate of University of Arizona, and since Stevens is a distinguished naval graduate. And since Swopes has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned to naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Swopes is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And since Tendek has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Tendek is a graduate of Texas State University. And since Thomas Jr. has been designated an oceanography officer and will be assigned a Fleet Weather Center in Norfolk, Virginia. And since Thomas Jr. is a graduate of the University of Akron. And since Thompson has been designated a Naval Supply Officer and will be assigned to Naval Supply Officer Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. And since Thompson is a graduate of Appalachian State University. And since Thompson has been designated a Student Naval Aviator and will be assigned a Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Thompson is a graduate of University of Arizona. And since Thorpe has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Thorpe is a graduate of Prairie View A&M University. And since Tom has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned a DDG-120 USS Carl M. Levin in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And since Tom is a graduate of University of Hawaii at Manoa. And since Torgerson has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to LSD-45 USS Comstock in San Diego, California. And since Torgerson is a graduate of Texas Christian University. And since Turcott has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Turcott is a graduate of Arizona State University. And since Baez has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Baez is a graduate of San Diego State University. And since Baez is a distinguished naval graduate. And since Miota Sanchez has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Miota Sanchez is a graduate of Florida Atlantic University. And since Virgil has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned a DDG-71 USS Ross in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And since Virgil is a graduate of Florida State University. And since Walden has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Walden is a graduate of Western Washington University. And since Wassenhof has been designated a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Wassenhof is a graduate of University of Maryland Global Campus. And since Worley has been designated a naval supply officer and will be assigned a naval supply officer course school in Newport, Rhode Island. And since Worley is a graduate of California State University, Long Beach. And since White has been designated a student naval aviator and will be assigned a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since White is a graduate of University of Colorado at Boulder. And since Williams has been des designated a student naval aviator, correction, a student naval flight officer and will be assigned to a naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. And since Williams is a graduate of University of Tennessee at Martin. And since Zangane has been designated a surface warfare officer and will be assigned to LCS-19 USS St. Louis Gold in Maryport, Florida. And since Zangane is a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest officers. We will now conclude the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photos. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are Nimitz Field and K Hall.
On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for attending today's ceremony. This concludes the graduation ceremony.